Hey guys, Rob here. Uh, welcome back to the channel. Thanks for visiting. Uh, if you've been here before, you may have already seen a video where I replaced the stock horn on my 2008 Triumph Tiger with that bad boy because the stock horn is a piece of garbage. So, uh, I'll preface this by saying I'm not a mechanic, I'm not an electrician, I have a job that is highly technical in another field and I do not have the time to dedicate to complicated, uh, involved processes for modifying or maintaining the bike. I take to a mechanic for the major stuff, but for minor stuff, I'm more than comfortable doing it, especially electrical stuff, as I've had some training in that aspect. Just, I'm not a professional. Uh, my professional training lies in another area, which we won't go into here, but uh, there are certain things that I feel comfortable doing myself, and that's why I'm bringing this to you today, because I want to uh, bring it to the masses, so you can see it's not hard. If I can do it, anyone can do it. It really is that simple. So, uh, going back to what I said just before here, there, uh, the horn is a huge deal with this, this bike. It is notoriously wimpy and disgusting and awful, and sounds like... Uh, some asthmatic kid trying to cough it's just it's a terrible thing and if you google the things that suck about this bike uh, the list is short it's a great motorcycle i love it to death i will ride it probably until it falls apart the uh, only problem is there are some issues which are fairly common for the triumph tiger uh, the horn is one of them it's terrible uh, the charging system if you ask any Tiger owner, they'll tell you that Tiger charging system is uh, anemic at best. So uh, the other problem is these, the headlights. And I'll show you what the problem is here. Just bear with me a second. So when you power it on, all you get is the left headlight. The right headlight, see the left is illuminated, the right does not come on. Now, I'm not sure who at Triumph decided this was a good idea but uh, a lot of Japanese sport bikes also do that and it aside from being uh, irritating when people say you've got a burnt out headlight when you don't uh, the other issue is it's pretty anemic it doesn't really throw a lot of light onto the uh, roadway which in an urban environment like Vancouver is not a huge deal but if you're out in the back country uh, which I do occasionally do it's really not that great a light. It's not very bright and you don't get a lot of preview of the road coming up ahead of you. You tend to outride that headlight a lot. So your alternative is to either drive slower or to put on the high beam for the entire time you're riding, which if you've got a lot of traffic coming the other way is not the best, it's gotta be said. With me when my neighbors is coming home, I'll be right back. So your options are to drive around with that high beam on or to uh, go the other route and install some additional lighting. So you can either upgrade these headlights to Xenon or LED, which is uh, expensive and complicated, requires all sorts of additional components and wiring, or you can install some additional auxiliary fog lights. Again, expensive. Last I checked, a uh, quality pair of driving lights were just under $800 Canadian, and uh, you need the mounting hardware and the wiring and uh, you may do end up doing all that and then your charging system may not be able to handle it anyways. So, what's a guy to do? Well, I uh, <clears throat> went out, did a little bit of Googling, and it turns out that there is this thing. So this is the uh, Twin Light Driver Kit. So essentially, what it does is it takes Using these components, uh, it takes your Triumph and makes it automatically engage the second headlight. Pretty sweet. And apparently it's so idiot proof that even someone like me can do it. So uh, what I thought I would do to save some people the hassle, if they do decide to go ahead and do this, is document the whole thing. So. Bear with me, I'll take you through step by step and you'll get to see exactly how this system works and uh, how it goes in and hopefully you too can be driving with a little bit more brightness on the road very shortly. Let's get going. So excuse my workbench here, I'm uh, 
like I said, operating out of my garage, I'm not a professional mechanic. Uh, so it comes with several guides. There's the Tiger 1050 installation guide, and we also have a guide just for uh, Daytona 675, and it's just for the hardware install. And then there's a complete list uh, indicating the various uh, beam patterns, sorry, uh, beam cycles you can do. You can have a modulating headlight or uh, varying degrees of brightness or, or uh, intensity. So it's got the step-by-step -step instructions here. It tells you exactly what you need to do once you've got it installed. So we will take care of that in a bit. So your kit's going to have those installed uh, items, and it's also going to have all the hardware you need. It's going to have, uh, it's like a switch, and some relay cables, as well as some zip ties. And that's probably the sensor then. Oh no, here's the sensor. And this is the uh, item, the actual switch that plugs into your relay in front of the handlebars. So we'll get going with that. Okay, so your first step is going to be to remove the seat. If you can't do that, you're probably watching the wrong video. And then you're going to remove your right fairing using a five millimeter Allen key or hex driver. I'll be right back. So you're gonna have a total of seven uh, <clears throat> hex bolts to remove. There's gonna be uh, two up here. It's attached to the uh, turn signal. And be careful with that, that wire is a little flimsy. And you're gonna have one there, one there. Sorry, and you're gonna have two there to remove this little part at the bottom. That should slide right off. And then your fairing, at least. Oh, see, it ain't resistant. There's another one up there. So once you get all of those off, then the fairing comes right off and you can access the internal workings. So once you get that uh, final bolt off up here that I missed, right down here there's a clip. You just uh, grab the fairing, slide it forward, and it'll come right off and you're good to go. So your headlight connector is located, sorry, I'm trying to get that up in there, in the head stem uh, up in here. And I'm sorry, I can't really get a great shot of it with this camera. Ah, there we go. It's located up in here. So you're gonna reach in and you're gonna pull that bad boy out and that's what we're gonna use to connect our system. So if you're trying to disconnect the wiring harness like I was and couldn't figure out how, there's this little button right here. You have to push it in, that will disconnect the harness, save you the trouble in the future. Sorry for the crappy angle here, doing this one-handed. Uh, given the difficulty in actually doing this, I'm not going to film this part, but essentially what you want to do is take that connector I showed you in the uh, previous segment there, and you're going to connect it using these. So once they're all connected together, you're going to tuck this whole assembly back up into there. Good luck if you uh, had it tied down as tightly as mine was. It was a bitch to get out. And then uh, you put them all back in there, and you're going to root this cable out. We'll cover that in the next step. All right, so when they're all connected, should have something like that. That's the twin light driver box up in there. Suggestion to you, make your life easier once again. Connect the short end first. You'll have a long and a short end if you're like me. One that's up inside the fairing, one that's up inside the connector area there. Get the one that you have the least amount of room to work with because it will be a bitch to get it in if you don't. And you will be left with two cables. One for your power. And then another one for an optical sensor, which we're going to root right now. Okay, so once you've got your uh, module in place, you're going to root it up underneath. I rooted it right through here. And you're going to root it along to a handlebar so that the sensor faces the sky. I'm just going to cable tie all the stuff in place so it looks neat and tidy. We're continuing on with the next step. Uh, one thing I neglected to mention is when you're connecting this uh, optical sensor, make sure you leave a little bit of uh, slack in there for the cable. Um, I find that uh, that's about enough for it to uh, freely move without causing any pinching or 
bending unnecessarily fray or damaged cable. So your next step is going to be to take, oops, take this bad boy, the uh, power connection. You're going to feed it through under here, uh, through this section of the engine uh, housing until it comes out to, at the bottom. Come down and through there. So I'm going to big fat fingers. You're going to root it through. A little red doodad, I'm not even sure what it is. Until you come out this end. And if you have some trouble with it getting caught on stuff, just uh, twist them together like a, a snake coming around a tree branch and it should pop through, no problem. Okay, so once you fed it through, you're going to root it up around past the uh, fuel line here and up and over. Make sure it doesn't touch the engine block. It's okay for the mountings, but not the block itself. Root it up. I left the zip ties on so you can see some connection points. Uh, connect both sides of each of the terminals here just so that they don't slip and come loose. That would be a pain in the ass after you do all this. And uh, yeah, once they're plugged in together, you're, uh, you're good to go. All right, so uh, reconnect your uh, battery terminals up here to the obvious ones, positive and negative. Uh, just in case you're curious, there's a little built-in, pardon my gigantic hand. There we go. Here's the uh, fuse right here for the system. Uh, 20 amp if you ever need to replace it. It's very simple to locate and replace and no fuss, no muss. And then you should in theory be good to go, but I would suggest before you even consider putting stuff back on like the fairings and whatnot, you give it a try. Test it out first. So as it turns out, programming this thing was the most difficult part of the whole adventure. Uh, the install was relatively quick and painless. All things considered, my lack of skill notwithstanding, it was uh, fairly quick, inside an hour, total. And that included all the time I had to screw around with these stupid uh, hex bolts to get the uh, fairing and all that crap back on. Um, essentially, uh, the one thing that threw me for a loop in the beginning is that apparently the default setting is off. So in order to turn it on, you basically have to turn the ignition on and then within two and a half seconds, very quickly, you flash it twice and it'll turn it back on, or at least uh, mine did. Yours may actually be on. I don't know if mine was just uh, already adjusted and they forgot to reset the, the RAM in it or whatever. So there are three headlight modes. There's modulator, daytime running light, and lower brightness uh, modulator. Uh, I really am annoyed by the modulating lights. Some people love them. They say it gives you more conspicuous uh, appearance. I wear a bright green jacket for that. If they don't see me wearing a nuclear green jacket, then they shouldn't be driving anyways, and the flashing headlights are not going to help much. So, uh, in order to change the pattern, what you need to do is turn it on, and then it has to be in sunlight. Uh, that's something else I figured out. This optical sensor right here has to be able to see the sky. If it can't see the sky, it won't work. So when you're in bright daylight, you go ahead and hit that uh, high beam switch three times, and then it'll show you the current setting that it's on. And every time you pull that switch after that, it'll cycle through the various types until you get to the one you want. Um, the list is extensive. As you can see here, there's a lot there. Uh, I ended up choosing like a 55 or sorry, 59% daytime running light so that it basically looks like they're both working normally and I don't have one burnt out headlight. Uh, the other options you have are to have the change in the delay. Normally how it works is if you turn the engine on right away, eight seconds later the lights come on. Uh, or if you just turn on the ignition without the engine, it takes 20 seconds. So you can default that to 14 second delay, eight second delay, or no delay. Uh, the headlights will then come on basically half a second apart and you're good to go. So, and there's a bunch of other stuff in there like... Uh, courtesy modes and high beams and testing the uh, threshold and all that, but that's not what you care about. What you care about is this. Yes. Turning it on is a good thing. There you go. Little headlights, you're good to go. People won't say you got a 
burnout one. You can adjust the intensity or the uh, crossfire if you like. But it works just fine. Once you get it installed, it's straightforward and simple to use. Uh, the manual has all of the uh, instructions on how you can change it around if that's the kind of thing that you're into. Frankly, I'm just going to set it here and leave it like this. That works for me. And uh, the most important thing is you turn it on, right, and the lights go on. Uh, here's that delay I was talking about. So the lights go on. But you hit that high beam. Oop, that's the kill switch, not the high beam. I'm an idiot. That's why you don't ride the bike backwards. But you hit the high beam, and it actually does still work as a high beam. So life is good. Anyways, guys, I hope this was helpful to you. Uh, if you uh, want to pick one up yourself, they're hard to find now. But uh, look for Eclipse Twin Light. And... Uh, you can probably get yours. I got mine through the UK by mail order on eBay. Uh, all told, with shipping, is about $130 Canadian. So I know it's a little bit expensive, but uh, it's still one of those annoying things and not have to mount external hardware and stuff. I think it's worth it. So, anyways, if you enjoyed this video, and uh, let me know. Just give me a like, subscribe if you're interested. And the more uh, crap I get and the more I put on here, uh, I'll make some videos. Assuming that, you know, they're not too technically challenging because I'm a functional idiot when it comes to tech stuff. Well, mechanical tech stuff, electronics, I'm good to go. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Bye.